Niobium is a chemical element with symbol NB and atomic number 41. In its natural state, it is a grey, soft, ductile transition metal. It is also one of the less well-known commodities that is mined today. Much of that, in our opinion, is due to there only being three primary producers of niobium, or more specifically, ferroniobium globally, and over 90% of the world's production coming from Brazil. Through our analysis, we examine the fundamentals for niobium, including its uses, current and future demand, as well as current and future supply factors. Niobium is predominantly used in the manufacturing of high strength low alloy steel, or HSLA. The amount of niobium that is added to HSLA is relatively minor in the overall production and cost, despite having a significant number of benefits, including an increase in the overall strength whilst decreasing the weight of the steel, improved durability, and an increase in heat resistance. The benefits of niobium being added to HSLA steel is highlighted by the World Steel Association, which estimates that when approximately 200 grams, or $9 of niobium, is added to the manufacturing of a car, it will lead to approximately 100 kilograms of weight reduction to the car. This has the added benefits of fuel reduction and a reduction in CO2 emissions. End uses of niobium include structural components for large-scale high-stress bearing structures, pipelines for gas and oil transportation, the automotive industry, and the stainless steel industry. A small amount of niobium is also used in aircraft gas turbine engines, MRI magnets, and camera lenses. The demand for niobium has been strong over the past decade and grown at a rate of approximately 8% per annum. The demand for niobium is driven by two major factors. The first being the underlying strength of the world economy. As the world economy grows stronger, so too does the demand for steel. And despite the much publicised fall experienced in other steel making products prices, specifically iron ore, we believe this price fall had more to do with an increased supply from major iron ore producers rather than the demand for steel, which continues to remain strong, however at a slightly slower growth rate than has been experienced over the past number of years. The other driving factor is the increase in demand for non-traditional niobium consuming countries. As shown in the graph, the majority of steel consumption comes from China whilst the continued increased amount of steel consumption from other BRIC nations is also notable. However, these countries on average consume significantly less niobium than the global average. This, in our opinion, is the greatest area for future demand of niobium. As the wealth of the population of these nations continues to grow, so will the population's demand for high quality products which niobium is used in, such as cars and stainless steel. This should see an increase in demand for niobium from these countries over time. Whilst we don't predict the future demand of niobium, we have examined the effect on the potential demand if China was to increase their consumption in line with their steel consumption. For this to occur, China would have to increase to 47% of global niobium demand. This would increase the global demand for niobium to approximately 100,000 tonnes per annum. Whilst this is only one single factor in isolation and cannot be relied upon alone, we believe it does highlight there is upside potential in the demand for niobium in the future. The supply of niobium is unique to any other commodity for a number of reasons. First of all, over 90% of global production comes from Brazil. Secondly, there are only three primary producers of niobium or ferroniobium globally with the majority of production coming from CBMM, a large private Brazilian company, which produces approximately 85% of global production. Anglo-American, which produces approximately 6-8% of global production. And Margus Resources, who recently acquired I Am Gold's Northern Quebec mine for $500 million, also produces between 6-8% of global production. 
The third and most interesting aspect in our opinion is that there have been no new Niobium projects brought into production since 1976. We have therefore examined why no new operations have been brought into production despite the long-term demand fundamentals appearing to be relatively strong. Roskill, a leader in international metals and mineral research, has stated that current producers have the capacity to significantly increase supply to 130,000 tonnes per year of ferroniobium, which is close to double the global demand in 2013. We believe this highlights a significant risk for would-be producers, as capital-intensive projects with relatively high cash costs compared to the long-term niobium price would be deterred from entering the market as the threat of current producers increasing production, therefore potentially leading to a weakness in the niobium price, is a significant threat. We therefore believe only projects with relatively low capital costs, low operating costs and production that will not significantly affect global supply could potentially bring a project through to production without a reaction from current producers. As this type of producer would not significantly affect the long-term current high price environment, nor would it be likely they would be deterred in the long term from short-term lower prices as their project would potentially still be profitable. As we highlight through our analysis, we believe Cradle's Panda Hill project meets all three of these key requirements.